Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree Number 26 of 2021, restructuring the Ministry of Health as follows: The Health Minister shall oversee first the Directorate of Communication, second the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health shall oversee Assistant Under Secretary for Public Health, who is responsible for the Directorate of Public Health and the Directorate of Health Promotion, Assistant Under Secretary for Psychiatry and Special Care for Elderly, the Directorate of Human Resources. Royal Decree Number 67 of 2017 on restructuring the Ministry of Health was abrogated. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa also issued Royal Decree Number 27 of 2021, appointing Rada Mohammed Hassan Al Adraj as Assistant Under Secretary for Housing Projects at the Ministry of Housing. His Majesty issued Royal Decree Number 28 of 2021, appointing Iman Ahmed Al Dosri as Under Secretary at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. The Royal Decree also stipulates the appointment of Khalid Fahd Al Alawi as Assistant Under Secretary for Industrial Development and Nibras Mohammed Ali as Assistant Undersecretary for Commercial Registration and Companies at the same ministry. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree Number 29 of 2021, appointing Fatma Jafar Mansour al Sayrafi as Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority. His Majesty the King issued Royal Decree Number 30 of 2021, appointing two Deputy Chief Executive Officers at the National Bureau for Revenue, the NBR. Under the decree, Yusuf Adel Matar was appointed as Deputy Chief Executive Executive for Policies and Planning and Noor Hafiz Ibrahim as the Deputy Chief Executive Officer for Tax Operations at the NBR. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today held a remote meeting with the chairman of the China National Pharmaceutical Group Corporation Sinopharm, Liu Jingzhen. During the meeting, His Royal Highness noted that overcoming challenges posed by COVID-19 requires ongoing and forward-looking international cooperation both to mitigate the spread of the virus and expedite vaccine delivery. In this regard, His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's commitment to expand its cooperation with COVID-19 vaccines vaccine manufacturers, including Sinopharm, as part of the national vaccination campaign and underscored Sinopharm's contribution to global immunization efforts. He underlined the Kingdom's vaccine partnership with Sinopharm, which has witnessed Bahrain's participation in Phase 3 clinical trials in cooperation with Abu Dhabi-based artificial intelligence and cloud computing company Group 42, the G42. His Royal Highness affirmed that Bahrain's success in curbing the spread of the virus is anchored in the efforts of first responders and coordinated campaign efforts as well as Team Bahrain's whole of society mitigation efforts. For his part, the chairman expressed his appreciation for His Royal Highness for contributing towards the global COVID-19 response. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued a Decree 13 of 2021 appointing two directorates, uh, two directors at the Ministry of Housing. Under the edict, Mohammed Abdelaziz Rashtan was appointed as Director of Housing Projects, Construction and Maintenance, and Balsam Ali Abd Ali Salman as Director of Housing Projects, Planning and Design. His Royal Highness also issued a Decree 14 of 2021 appointing Mahmoud Ahmed Ali Mikbal as the Director of Community communication and awareness at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince issued Edict 15 of 2021, appointing Manal Ali Yusuf Adoy as Director of Human and Financial Resources and Shogis Sayyid Ismail Al Alawi as Director of Handicrafts at Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities. His Royal Highness issued Edict 16 of 2021, appointing the following directors at the National Bureau for Revenue. Adil Yusuf Al Gallaf, Director Director of the Tax Information Directorate, Amal Abdurrada Makhlouq, Director of the Risk Analysis Directorate, Mahmoud Fad Habib Khalifa, Director of the Operation and Auditing Directorate, Isra Mehdi Abdullah, Director of the Tax Policies Directorate, Sarah Mohammed Al Kawari, Director of the Planning and Development Directorate. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, received two students who won the Hamdan bin Rashd al Maktoum Award for Distinguished Academic Performance in its 23rd session in the Distinguished Students category. The Minister congratulated the students, hailing their efforts in winning this important academic award. Dr. Naimi affirmed the Ministry's interest in annually participating in this award within the framework of close ties between Bahrain and the UAE in many fields as a result of the directives of both countries 
country's leaderships and their distinguished relations. He also noted the important role of the award in motivating outstanding schools, teachers and students in the GCC. As part of the awareness campaign launched by the Ministry of Housing in cooperation with the Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning concerning construction requirements, the Works Ministry underscored the government's interest in services and facilities, adding that this reflects its commitment to providing the best services to citizens and residents according to the latest international standards. The Ministry commended the government's efforts in reviewing the organizational requirements for construction, noting the cooperation between the Ministry of Housing and the Ministry of Works to spread community awareness regarding commitment to regulations and requirements during construction and demolition. The Ministry underlined the recent amendment to some organizational requirements for housing units where the committee formed by the Housing and Municipalities Affairs Ministries approved nearly 30 articles to allow real estate owners to amend violations according to the new requirements. Based on the opinions of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs and the recommendations of the National Medical Task Force for combating the coronavirus and following consultations with the Sunni and Jafari endowments, the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments announced the reopening of mosques for Fajr, Dhuhr and Asr prayers starting from Thursday the 4th of March while adhering to all precautionary measures to ensure the safety of all. The decision will be subject to periodic review based on developments. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil al Assoumi, hailed the Yemen donor conference organized by the UN virtually, commending the pledges announced during the conference aimed at alleviating the suffering of the Yemeni people from the humanitarian crisis, the pandemic, and the Houthi practices and crimes against civilians. Al Assoumi praised the Arab participation in the conference, especially the pledges announced by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, which reflect its ethical and humanitarian commitment towards Yemeni people. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament called on the international community to take a firm stance to reach a final and sustainable solution to the Yemeni crisis that achieves security and stability and ends the daily suffering of the Yemeni people and the continuous terrorist practices and violations of the Iran-backed Houthi militia. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil bin Abdurrahman al Assoumi, met today with the Speaker of the Yemeni House of Representatives, Sheikh Sultan al Burkani. The two sides discussed means of bolstering parliamentary relations between the Arab Parliament and the Yemeni House of Representatives. Al Assoumi affirmed the Arab Parliament's keenness on strengthening coordination with the Yemeni Parliament to serve the Yemeni people and achieve security and stability while maintaining the unity and safety of Yemeni lands. Al Assoumi underscored the keen interest of the Arab Parliament and the pivotal Yemeni cause. He reiterated the solidarity and support of the Parliament to the legitimate government and House of Representatives in Yemen. For his part, Speaker al burkani praised the extensive efforts of the Arab Parliament and its role in bolstering joint parliamentary work between Arab countries. Tim Keen announced that it will extend support for another six months to institutions operating in exhibitions, conferences and gyms within the business continuity support program that offers financial support to small and micro enterprises adversely affected by the repercussions of COVID-19. The mandate is an implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at the Executive Committee meeting last Thursday. The extension is within the framework of supporting the sustainability of the development process to assist the institutions affected by the consequences of the pandemic, especially those whose scope of work is still affected by the virus. The six-month support will also include four will also include tour guides in the tourism and hospitality sector registered with the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. The support is due to the suspension of their activities and implementation of the precautionary measures. Tim Keen launched the business continuity support program following the directives of his Majesty. To see King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to unite the national effort to combat the repercussions of COVID-19 on economic levels. The program is part of the economic stimulus package announced by the government. 
the national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that the total number of vaccinated individuals reached 301,103. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,692 with 806 recoveries, 644 registered new cases and one death. 255 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 379 are contacts of active cases and 10 are travel related. The deceased was a 63-year-old female citizen. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.